Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ravi Toteja, Associate Professor in Zoology from Acharya Narendra Dev College, University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about a module, Cells of Immune System under paper Immunology. The learning objectives of this modules are first one process of generation of immune cells various types of cells involved in innate and adaptive immunity functions of various cell types in generation of immune response the response to pathogens is coordinated by the complicated interactions and activities of the large number of different cell types involved in immune response. The innate immune response is the first line of defense and occurs soon after the exposure of pathogen. Innate immune response is carried out by phagocytic cells, namely neutrophils and macrophages, natural killer cells and granulocytes. The adaptive immune response, which is specific, includes antigen-specific defense mechanisms and may take days to develop. Cell types with critical roles in adaptive immunity are antigen-presenting cells, APCs, including macrophages and dendritic cells. Antigen-dependent stimulation of various cell types including T, B cells and macrophages all play critical roles in host defense. The immune system has large collection of cells, not only lymphocytes but also phagocytes and their relatives. Some immune cells take on all corners, while others are trained on highly specific targets. The immune system stores just a few of each kind of the different cells needed to recognize millions of possible enemies. When an antigen appears, these few matching cells multiply into a full-scale army, after their job is done, they fade away, leaving behind to watch for future attacks. The term hematopoiesis refers to the formation and development of the cells of the blood. Hematopoiesis is a continuous process throughout adulthood. It is estimated that the average human produces 3.7 into 10 raised to power 11 blood cells per day. This process is regulated by complex mechanism. Cell division and differentiation during hematopoiesis are balanced by apoptosis, that is programmed cell death. If apoptosis fails, a leukemic state can occur. In humans, this process begins in the yolk sac in the first weeks of embryonic development. By the third month of gestation, stem cells migrate to the fetal liver and then to the spleen, that is between 3 to 7 months gestation, these two organs play a major hematopoietic role. Next, the bone marrow becomes the major hematopoietic organ and hematopoiesis seizes in the liver and spleen. Every functional and specialized Mature blood cell is derived from a common stem cell. These stem cells are therefore pluripotent. These stem cells represent a self-renewing population of cells. These cells have the potential to differentiate and to become committed to a particular blood cell lineage. Pluripotent stem cells differentiate into two major pathways, lymphoid and myeloid. Stem cells then become progenitor cells 
for each type of mature blood cell, these cells have lost the capacity of self-renewal and are committed to a given cell lineage. The myeloid progenitor cells develop into the cells that respond early and non-specifically to infection. Neutrophils engulf bacteria upon contact and send out warning signals. Monocytes turn into macrophages in body tissues and phagocytose for an invaders. Granule containing cells such as eosinophils attack parasites, while basophils release granules containing histamine and other allergy related molecules. Lymphoid progenitors develop into lymphocytes. Lymphocytes respond later in infection. They normally mount specific attack involving antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells or macrophages. Progenitor commitment depends upon the acquisition responsiveness to certain growth factors. The particular microenvironment, hematopoiesis inducing microenvironment within the progenitor cell resides which controls differentiation. The hematopoietic cells grow and mature on a meshwork of stromal cells, which are non-hematopoietic cells that support the growth and differentiation of hematopoietic cells. The meshwork of stromal cells include fat cells, endothelial cells, fibroblasts, and macrophages. Some of hematopoietic growth factors are colony stimulating factors, multi lineage colony stimulating factor, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, macrophage colony stimulating factor, granulocyte colony stimulating factor, erythropoietin, interleukin 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. CSFs, that is colony stimulating factors, act in stepwise manner, inducing proper maturation. IL-3 acts early, possibly even at the level of pluripotent stem cells to induce formation of the non-lymphoid cells, erythrocytes, monocytes, granulocytes, neutrophil, ne eosinophils, basophils, and megakaryocytes. GM-CSF acts at a slightly later stage, but it also induces formation of all non-lymphoid blood cells. MCSF and GCSF act still later to promote the formation of monocytes and granulocytic cells respectively. IL-4 stimulates B progenitor, IL-5 stimulates eosinophil progenitor, IL-6 stimulates the myeloid stem cell, IL-7 induces the differentiation of lymphoid progenitor into B cell progenitor and T cell progenitor. IL-8 stimulates the neutrophil progenitor. IL-9 stimulates the mast cell growth. Figure number one. This figure explains the process of hematopoiesis. As we can see that the process of hematopoiesis starts with the pluripotent stem cells. It then divides into two lineages, that is myeloid and lymphoid progenitors common myeloid progenitor and common lymphoid progenitor. Lymphoid progenitors give rise to various only lymphocytes, whereas myeloid progenitors give rise to RBCs, monocytes and granulocytes. Now first seeing the myeloid progenitors. This myeloid progenitors then give rise to three different types of cells. First one is the megakaryoblast, then second one is the pro-erythroblast and the third one is the myeloblast. Myeloblast then get differentiated into various types of cells namely pro B, B cell pro myeloblast and pro N stands for neutrophil pro myeloblast, eosinophil pro myeloblast and monoblast. 
this basophil promyeloblast give rise to b myelocyte this b myelocyte then give rise to b metamyelocyte and then finally to the basophil similarly neutrophil prone myeloblast give rise to neutrophil myelocyte neutrophil metamyelocyte and finally neutrophil e that is eosinophil promyelocyte give rise to eosinophil myelocyte and this give rise to e mela metamyelocyte and finally eosinophil and finally monoblast give rise to promonocyte and this then finally give rise to monocyte similarly mega karyoblast give rise to platelets and pro erythroblast give rise to erythrocyte whereas common lymphoid progenitor give rise to lymphoblast and this give rise to pro lymphocytes which then finally get differentiated into natural killer cell and b and t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes upon activation give rise to plasma cells this is how the process of hematopoiesis takes place in the bone marrow figure 2 this figure explains the various cells involved in the immune system again it is showing there are two types of cell lineages lymphoid and myeloid from the lymphoid lineage lymphocytes arises and lymphocytes and natural killer cells whereas from myeloid progenitors the cells like neutrophils eosinophils basophils and these three cell types comes under granulocytes in addition to this myeloid progenitor cells or myeloid lineage also give rise to mast cells and antigen presenting cells which are dendritic and macrophage cells whereas lymphoid lineage give rise to t lymphocytes both t helper and t c cells natural killer cells and b cells also plasma cells so these are the various cells which are involved in giving the immunity to our body or we can say these are the cells of the immune system b cells b cells account for 10 to 15 percent of the circulating lymphocytes they are called b because they were first discovered to mature in the organ called bursa fabricus in birds but humans do not have this organ and b cell maturation takes place in bone marrow and hence the name remains b cells b cells circulate around the body in the blood stream when activated they release huge amount of antibodies the major function of b lymphocyte is to develop into antibody secreting plasma cells and that happens only after stimulation by antigens and antigen can be bacteria viruses tumor cells etc antibodies are specialized protein molecules that specifically recognize and bind to specific antigen that caused their stimulation antibody production and binding to foreign antigen is very critical means of signaling other cells to engulf kill or remove that substance from the body lymphocytes destined to become b cells move to bone marrow instead of thymus to mature after addition of cell receptors and receptors for b cells are antibodies these are released into blood once released they move to the lymphoid tissue of the body b cells play two important roles in providing the protection to the body antibody production against the appropriate target antigen presenting antigens to t cells and therefore 
providing signals for T cell activation. The majority of B cell activation takes place in lymph nodes. Certain types of cells in the lymph nodes eat any foreign and present them to B and T cells. Any B cell that share a receptor for this substance will be activated and start to multiply. That we have learnt in clonal selection theory also. B cells can also be activated by helper T cells. After activation, active B cells migrate around the body and change into plasma cells. Plasma cells. Plasma cells are the B cells or we can say they are the activated B cells that are responsible for the production and secretion of antibody type. This secretion gives rise to the antibodies found in the circulation. Immunity is kept for as long as plasma cell continues to secrete antibodies. Memory B cells. Memory B cells are also formed after stimulation. These cells migrate to the lymph nodes where they remain ready for further round of activation should the same antigen ever be encountered again. T cells. T lymphocytes are usually divided into two major subsets that are functionally and phenotypically different. T helper cells, also called TH cells, are also called CD4 positive cells and these are involved in coordination and regulation of immunological responses. They function to mediate response by secretion of cytokines that stimulate B lymphocytes to secrete antibodies and TC cells to get activated into cytotoxic T lymphocytes. The second type of T lymphocytes are cytotoxic T lymphocytes or CD8 positive T cells. These cells are involved in directly killing of tumor cells, viral infected cells or self-altered cells. CD8 positive T cells are also important in down-regulation of immune responses. Both types of T cells can be found throughout the body most conspicuously in the lymphoid organs, lymph nodes and spleen, but also in liver, lung, blood and intestinal tract. Natural killer cells. Natural killer cells are similar to TC, that is CD8 positive T cells. They function as effector cells that directly kill certain tumors or viral infected cells. However, NK cells, unlike CD8 positive cells, kill their target cells without need for recognition of antigen in association with MHC molecules. Monocytes. Monocytes are a type of white blood cells. They are the largest type of WBCs and can differentiate into macrophages. Monocytes compose 2% to 10% of all leukocytes in the human body. As the monocytes begin to travel, they enter major organs such as liver and pancreas. As part of the vertebrate innate immune system, monocytes also influence the process of adaptive immunity. Macrophages Besides their role in phagocytosis, they may function as antigen-presenting cells because they ingest foreign material and present these antigens to other cells of the immune system such as T cells and B cells. This is the first step in the initiation of an immunological response. Macrophages stimulated by certain cytokines exhibit increased level of phagocytosis and are also able to secrete cytokines that modulate immune response. Figure 4. This figure explains the process of phagocytosis by the macrophage or antigen-presenting cell. 
here we can see that various steps have been depicted that are the first one that is the ingestion of the microorganism so at the first step the microorganism is taken up by the phagocytes by the pseudopodia once it is taken up by the macrophage or the phagocyte it then forms the endosome it then enters into the body of the cell and it forms the endosome and the third step is the fusion of this endosome with the lysosome here the disintegration of antigen will take place or we can say the digestion of antigen will take place and this digestion takes place because there is a secretion of lysosomal enzyme in the endosome by the lysosome and the lysosome enzymes are hydrolytic in nature it brings about the degradation of the antigen once this has taken place then the residual body is formed which is depicted by the fourth this residual body contains the digested material and this digested material is then secreted out by the process which is called as exocytosis and this if here at this stage the antigen get associated with the mhc complex and it then get expressed at when the process of exocytosis is taking place the antigen is complexed with the mhc molecule and it is then expressed on the surface of the cell and this antigen presenting cell will then present the antigen which is complexed with the mhc molecule to the t helper cells and then activates the t helper cells to induce the immune response dendritic cells dendritic cells also originate in the bone marrow and function as antigen presenting cells apcs dendritic cells are more efficient apcs than macrophages these cells are found in lymphoid organs thymus lymph nodes and spleen bloodstream and other tissues of the body they capture and process antigen in the lymphoid organs where an immunological response is initiated neutrophils neutrophils are phagocytes that travels throughout the body these cells are normally found in the bloodstream and are the most abundant type of phagocyte during the acute phase of inflammation neutrophils migrate towards the site of inflammation and are usually the first cell to arrive at the scene of infection basophils and eosinophils basophils and eosinophils are related to neutrophils they secrete chemical mediators that are involved in defending against parasites and play a role in the allergic reactions such as asthma mast cells mast cells reside in connective tissues and mucous membranes and regulate the inflammatory response they are most often associated with allergy and anaphylaxis when there is a degranulation of mast cells it leads to the allergic reactions and degranulation of mast cells is because when the body is exposed to the allergens so there is the activation of mast cells in case of allergic reactions so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module both adaptive and innate response are carried out by number of cell types these cells are formed in bone marrow by the process called as metapoiesis following is the brief summary of various cell types involved in the generation of immune response b cell or b lymphocyte a white blood cell that produce antibodies specific to the antigen basophil a white blood cell that releases histamine a substance involved in allergic reactions and that produces substances to attract other white blood cells 
such as neutrophils and eosinophils to the site of injury and is responsible for inflammation. Dendritic cell, a cell that is derived from WBC, resides in the tissues and helps T cells recognize foreign antigen. Eosinophil, again another type of WBC that kills bacteria and also kills other foreign cells too big to ingest that may help immobilize and kill parasite that participates in allergic reactions and that may help destroy the cancer cells. Helper T cells or TH cells, a type of lymphocyte that helps B cells produce antibodies against foreign antigens and also helps TC cells to get activated into cytotoxic T lymphocytes and it also stimulates macrophages. TC cells or killer T cell, a T cell that attaches to infected cell and cancer cells and kills them. Leukocyte, a WBC such as monocyte, a neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, a lymphocyte or any type of WBC. Lymphocyte, a WBC responsible for acquired immunity including producing antibodies, distinguishing self from non-self and killing infected cell and cancer cells. Macrophage, a large cell that develops from a white blood cell called monocyte that ingests bacteria and other foreign cells that helps T cells identify microorganisms and other foreign substances and that is normally present in the lungs, skins, liver and other tissues. Mass cell, a cell in the tissues that releases histamine and other substances involved in inflammatory and allergic reactions. Natural killer cell, a type of WBC that can recognize and kill abnormal cells such as certain infected cells and cancer cells without having to first learn that the cells are abnormal. Neutrophil, a white blood cell that ingests and kill bacteria and other foreign cells. Phagocyte, a type of a cell such as neutrophil or macrophage that ingests and kills or destroys invading microorganisms, other cells and cell fragments. Regulatory or T suppressor cell, a white blood cell that helps end an immune response. T cell, T lymphocyte, a WBC that is involved in acquired immunity and that may be one of the three types, helper, killer or regulatory. Thank you.